So Michelle D is asking, when you realize you have no free will and you aren't real, et cetera, what do you do when that brings such despair and hopelessness? What's the point of staying in the body if you don't have control when you can see through separation and all there is is pain? That's to you, Aaron. Yeah, not a not a simple question to answer, but um, when we talk about like non-doership or non-duality of the person doesn't have free will or the person doesn't do anything, when the ego hears that message, it becomes this extremely depressing message of like, it's the worst nightmare for the ego who thinks it's the doer to say you're not the doer. And oftentimes, as I'm sure you know, Kyle, people will hear that message and go, I'm not the doer. Oh, bummer. So now I just have to sit on the couch and stare at the wall and drool because I'm not the doer. Right. And I always laugh at that because it's so clearly the ego hearing the message and right. obviously not understanding it. So the message isn't that you were the doer, you really were a separate self. And now that you've heard the message of enlightenment, well, now you've ceased to be a separate self. Bummer. No, no, no. The message is you never were the doer. You've never been a separate self. It's always been a kind of fantasy or delusion. So nevertheless, you were never the doer, but look at all the things you've done. Look at all the things that have happened through you, right? So the message is the wave is actually the ocean. It's actually the most expansive possible message that you've been playing small ball with the ego. You've been over here with your one penny being like, this is the most precious penny in the universe. And you have $20 billion sitting in your house waiting for you. Once you really know that, you throw that penny in the dirt and sprint over to your house. Like that's when you hear the message of, what this is really pointing to, that's the feeling you'll get is it's expansive. It's, oh, I'm the whole universe in ecstatic motion. What could be more liberating than that? But if the ego hears it, it hears it as, oh, I really am a separate self that doesn't have free will. And the truth of the message is, no, there isn't a separate self with or without free will. There is no separate self. That's the message. Hell yeah. And if I were to, to double up on that, that was so good. I would just say also, Michelle, if you're looking for something to do with that, it sounds like there's a lot of pain that wants to be seen. And in the energy that that is saying, you know, I'm I'm depressed about this or I'm feeling off or there's there, you know, there's hopelessness. First of all, I said the other day. Hopelessness is fantastic because you've let go of hope, which is an escape from the future that's here to cover up whatever you're feeling in your body. There you go. Right. So allowing yourself to feel whatever you're feeling about this illusion that you had control in this way that was kind of if it's ego, it was here to control you from being hurt again or abandoned again or whatever it was doing. So maybe it needs to go through a tantrum for a while and you become the new mother that it's never had. You become the space of love and let it just freak out and let it be heard. The idea that you don't have control, what does that bring up? The idea that there, there is no separate self to protect yourself from someone that you've made separate from you. What, is that, what does that bring up? And then you get in the now and you you listen to the now and then you listen to the feelings that are trying to come to light. And these feelings are completely allowed. And in the past, they were the, the repression of those feelings have been running the show. But maybe the universe is saying it's time for these feelings to not be here anymore. So I'm going to make life uh beyond your egoic control so that the ego can collapse into you now. And we just start to listen deeper. And instead of running everything, like it's your five-year-old running everything to not get hurt, right? <laughs> instead, we just listen deeply and we love it. And we thank it for protecting us up until our new awareness that you're oneness, that you're all that is, you know, it did its job at the consciousness you were at. And now yeah. life is shining a higher flashlight on you. And and it's showing you more and it's going, life wouldn't be exciting if you had that egoic control for the rest of your life. It's time to experience a whole new life right now. So, yes. 
So you get to experience it with the release of that. And I love what Aaron's saying. It's only the ego that's feeling so depressed about the idea that you don't have free will right? It's only the ego that's going, no, it's really going, I want control of everything. But yeah. if you, if you go, no, you, you get to let go of control a little bit. You'll still take some actions and have some joy and do what you want, but you get to be more collaborative with the, all that is. And so it's only the ego that all that is a sign of is that the ego ran everything so tightly and there mm-hmm. was no, no light in there. Like, you know, if, if you were being half, connecting to the light and being the ego, this would be freedom. But if you were only in the ego, then this is death. So now you get to also know that you've done everything you've done up till now with a ton of it from the control ego aspect. So wait till you see what can be done through you. Wait till you see what you can do. You've done all those things with just your five-year-old not getting abandoned again. Wait till you see (laughs) what you are now. So, you know, you're going to love it. And everything that you were protecting from, you'll realize is you, you're going to heal that. Those things will stop doing that. Like it's, it's going to be good. That is an empowering message, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's fun to, to do it with you. Like we each have a, a thing and then it's, it's, it, it brings two different voices saying the same thing. So they can hear it in all different ways. It's a little right. co-creation. Yeah. Right. I know. It's so fun. You want to do one more? Should we do? Yeah. This, yeah, this question goes right in, in coincides with the one we just answered too. So the question is for everyone watching, I'm not lacking money, needing a relationship, wanting more of anything, but I'm overwhelmingly sad every (laughs) single day. Mornings are the worst. I no longer trust our world. Okay. So you are wanting something just so you know, Yeah, you're wanting the world (laughs) to be different, right? Um, So that's where the pain is, right? I, I am no longer trust our world. I'm not aligned with most everyone from my life any before so you're wanting some other one there right you want to be the same <laughs> she's writing in the chat shit damn it okay um right okay i'm not aligned with most everyone from my life before i had my awakening okay that's perfect that's fine you're not supposed to be and who knows what aligned means by the way right like aligned means you just don't remember when you were in high school i just have to say and you mm-hmm. liked someone and you fell in love based on we like the same band okay mm-hmm. Yep. This is what I'm not aligned with now means, right? Like, it's like, it's the same thing. It's like, we both like the color blue, right? It's, it's okay. They're, they're still you. They just might not be in the same awakening aspect of you and they don't like Pearl Jam, right? It says, <laughs> I, I have a lovely supportive circle, but I cannot shake the sadness. So I, it says what to do. I'm doing so much inner work and silence and aloneness. So first of all, whatever's supposed to fall off is supposed to fall off. Right. So you're, I, I cannot shake the sadness. Don't shake it. Right. Aaron, what would you say? I should, I'll let you do it. And then I'll, (laughs) yeah. You know, this was very much my catalyst for many years. Uh, just the severe depression and hopelessness that I couldn't shake. And, uh, you know, I came out of Christianity, as I mentioned, and I was a worship leader my whole life. Um, very much devout in love with God, worshiping God, talking to God all day in my head. But when I left Christianity, I, I left that bhakti part of me as well, the devotional side of things. And I tried to make God this intellectual pursuit by pursuing Eastern teachings. And it was very much what I needed at the time because my theology was like really distorted from Christianity. But I gained all these great spiritual truths and concepts, but I still wasn't happy. And after four or five years of that, I was like building to a point where it was, I was suffering because I couldn't stop suffering, even though I knew all these high level truths. So I started to cry out to God more and more from a very sincere, deep place of that hopelessness. And I said, God, what do I have to do, man? Like I've done everything I know how to do to be happy. I meditate. I forgive people. I do shadow work. Why am I still so depressed every day? And I felt this voice from within me, like a ray of sunlight or something that said, Aaron, did you forget that you used to love me? And now I've just become this intellectual pursuit. And I just, it broke me, man. I I almost like had repressed like a trauma or something. 
the, the days and the weekends I would spend in my room, locked in my room, worshiping God and dancing for God and the, all the worship services I would lead, tears flowing, just connecting with God in my heart, no concepts, just pure heart connection. And I was like, wow, I did forget. I did forget that I can love you. I made everything about knowing and understanding. And that's, that's a part mm. of the picture, but not the whole picture. And I think that's because the heart is like the interface between the mind and reality in that when the mind just keeps looking out through the eyes, trying to know reality through concepts and definitions, it just dissects it and separates everything and fragments everything, right? With labels and stuff. And the more labels and the more we think we know and stuff, it's like it deadens us to the beauty and the aliveness and the mystery of, of life. And so the mind can really only see reality as it is when it looks down and out through the heart, through love, right? Love is like the binding force of the whole universe. And so until, until one learns to see life through the heart, through love, it's as if the universe hasn't been fully like glued back together again in the mind. And so we need to, we need to pursue more love and devotion, I think, than we do concepts and understanding because mm. ego will definitely weaponize your spiritual concepts against you and use it to hurt you, right? Like, oh, you know all these truths and yet you're still miserable. Ha <laughs> ha, life sucks. And right. in reality, life is the most beautiful, magical, mysterious, incredible phenomenon that could ever exist. And you're inside of it right now. It's full of possibilities, full of wonder and mystery. And you're not looking at it because you're divorcing your heart from the picture. So I always go back to love and devotion of let me fall in love with God and let me make devotion my highest ideal. And to me, that's the medicine that actually lifts us from the pit of suffering is that there's kind of an, there's kind of like a wilderness period we go through when we study, 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 we learn what the ego is and that we're not that. And it's like, we're looking at this desert, this wasteland and going, okay, I'm not this awesome. Yeah. Not this, <laughs> but it's like behind you is a beautiful pasture of lush green paradise. And you got to turn around and see it. And the turning around to see who you really are, the inward facing path, I think is the path of devotion. So whenever I get these questions from people of, I feel depressed, I'm hopeless. Why can't, can't I be happy? Say, learn to love again. You know, love is the only thing that actually satisfies the soul. That's so beautiful. And I, I also think that we should, that, that was so good. There's so much you just said there. That's so good. I'm trying to even think of like my mind just exploded with which way do I want to go with it? But like, you know, hearing like, first of all, like she wrote when in the comments while it was going by, like she goes, my, my family's all about doctors and degrees and all these different things. And so one of the things probably happening also is the fall apart of the intellectual you, the, the, yes. the family dynamic that that like I, you're you're saying goodbye to so much studying and mentally understanding and this world that's created that's the highest level like like even even in the self-help world like there's guys that are like you know why i'm where i am because i read all these books and i'm like that's not living <laughs> like, you know like that's cool but like that's yeah. that's cool you read the books but and and i do too but like it's also the the experience of it experience. and i think that there's sometimes the most subtle addiction is having a massive intellect and mental understanding that's oh, yeah. blocking you because it's so high that it's blocking you from the full experience and you get you have all the justification like i know this i have these degrees or i understand i've read everything why am i still in this is because because you got to know that subtle distinction between understanding something and living it. And just yeah. because you understand it, it's actually your mind stopping you from connecting to your body, right? Yeah. Like still, oh, under yes. you know what I mean? Like it's your yeah. mind going, yeah, we got it here filed. Don't feel your heart. Yes. You know what I mean? And now the, the you intellect, the intellect will tell you that it's irrational to see life through the heart. Like all oh, feelings and, and connection, that's all hippie nonsense like it's the intellect and i'm the only way to know it it'll gaslight you from actually opening your heart to life and uh you know ironically when when you actually do open your heart to life 
that's when you actually gain real intelligence. You know, yes. before that, it's a kind of virtual pseudo intelligence of the mind's labels, which labels can point us to reality. But like you said, experiencing reality is the highest form of knowing it. Yeah. So I, and I would add to that, Katie, you're being asked to move from, and, and you know what, it's crazy to think, I can think of people I know who are massively intellectual, but not open to awareness and that they are the most depressed, but they like, this is just airy fairy stuff we're talking about. So yeah. it's just like, so depressing because they're capped at that. They're whatever Ivy league brilliant or whatever, but then this isn't tapped because it's, yeah. and, and I realized that it's no different than drugs or alcohol. It's just a completely totally. rewarded addiction. So you have no reason to go past it and you, yes. then, right. And so if you're here, know that we're offering you Katie and um, who was before Michelle, that like you're being asked to move into living it and don't just have the concepts, don't just have the understanding. In fact, a breakthrough is when it shows up on the inside and all the mental understandings follows what you discovered from the inside, right? Not the outside. Yeah. That's why it's an insight, right? Reading yeah. a book is great, but that's all outsights, yeah. right? So you're having yeah. a lot of outsights. It's outside of you. And that's really, really cool, but there's nothing better than having a discovery that happens inside and then the mental understanding follows the yes inside that that that's that's where you suddenly are unique right because you're now speaking uniquely because it came from inside you're not kind of regurgitating another speaker or something you're you're yeah. really your uniqueness right yeah and so that that's why this is so so big and that's what and imagine a world where there's eventually 8 billion uniques coming through 8 billion true yeah. until you know internal offerings to the external right that's that's come i believe that's happening i believe that's on the way that we have our insights that then the understandings of what you knew from your inside that's a non-debatable thing not something that someone just taught you from a history book right absolutely that's that's why the only way to control people is to keep them in fear and in strife so that that beautiful uniqueness doesn't come out of people. Because yeah. if it did, man, we'd create such a new beautiful world tomorrow together with yes. all of our potential.